Hello and welcome to this tutorial on HR7 Soup Transformers. HR7 Soup workflows make it easy to take an inbound message and send it or save it elsewhere. But sometimes you have to edit the values a bit first. Sometimes you have to entirely change the message from one type to another. These are problems that transformers are designed to overcome. They transform the message used by an activity with a set of rules and values from other activities. Most activities in a workflow are attempting to perform an action on a message of some sort. Well, in HR7Soup, we call this the message template. The message template is the base message that the transformer is going to act on. It might just be a placeholder showing you the message structure, or it could be a message that's bound in from your receiver or other activities. The important thing is to realize that the value of the message template is what you'll be working with in your transformer. Editing transforms are easy. Most activities have a button in their details, but easier still is the double circle icon that shows when you put the mouse over an activity in the workflow. Here is our transformers screen. We have a source tree and a destination tree that are generated from the message templates we placed into the activities. The general goal of transformers is to take the values from the source tree and map them into the values in the destination tree. The mappings will show here, and their details will show here. For example, we find the patient's family name in the PID 5.1, and we drag it across into the name field in our destination tree. We've now created a mapping between the messages that joins the message together. Each time this workflow runs our transformer, our destination message template will be updated with a family name from the source. We can even adjust where our source data comes from. Would you like a certain value to come from another activity? Easy, just select your source activity here and watch the message trees repopulate, ready to be dragged across. If your activity doesn't have a response message, you can just pass one in here and it will reflect back in the activity. The same goes for the destination message. Handy when you forgot to add your message template earlier. You can also adjust the existing transformers. Clicking on a transformer shows its details and here you can easily make alterations. Manually adjust the message of a path, or just drag it in from your source tree. You can even use the anchor button to adjust which activity you are getting your values from. The type of transformer you've just set is called a mapping transformer, but there are others. Click here and you can see all that are available to you. With this one, you can create variables, and I'll show you what this means in just a minute but I thought I'd also bring your attention to this transformer. It's my own special transformer that I created. It does whatever I need to do because I wrote it myself in .NET. We've got a video on creating your own transformers. It's really easy to do and allows you to do just about anything you like when transforming your data. Better yet, you can even debug your transformers with Visual Studio, but all that's in another video I've linked to in the comments. Let's take a look at what a variable transformer is for. Well, it creates variables, and variables are simply a place to store the values for use elsewhere in the workflow. What's great about them is you can combine variables with fixed text and other variables to create dynamic or complex values. For example, I can put a variable value into the file path of a file I'm writing out. I just add the variable, give it a name, navigate to where I want it, and then right click and insert the variable. I'll head back to my transformers, where you'll remember I bound the patient's last name to my name field earlier. Well, I'd actually prefer that this was the patient's full name, written in the format of last name, comma, first name. I can't bind multiple items into my name field, so I'll create a variable that merges this text together. I create a variable for the last name by dragging it in, and I give it the name I want, and now the first name and I'll rename that too. Now I create another variable for the full name. I'll give it a sample value, and then just insert the variables in the order of last name, then first name, and place a comma between those. So now our full name variable is ready. We just head over to my earlier transformers, change its source to text and variables, and add in the full name variable. Done. When transformers are executed, they run in order from top to bottom in this list. That means you have to make sure that the variables are set in the correct order. There'd be no point setting the name field with the full name variable if it hasn't yet been set. 
Thankfully, you can easily adjust the order with a simple drag and drop. Great. To join the names together, I also could have just created my own custom transformer, and that could have simplified creating the full name variable. Fortunately, I can demonstrate this because concatenating the names is exactly what the sample custom transformer does. If I add it to our transformers list, you'll see a place for the first and last names. Now I just drag these into the boxes and it's ready to go. Custom transformers can automatically create variables for you too. And so I set this for my name field instead. Don't forget to take a look at our custom transformers video, where we'll show you how simple it is to create your own transformers and even provide you with a sample code. If you find our videos helpful, then please subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to help us out, then please like this video. Thank you.